Hi, everyone. Welcome to our latest um, Ozabot webinar. Today, we're going to be learning all about deconstruction. Um, this is something new that um, we've just created for you guys, and so we wanted to share it. And um, I'll go ahead and introduce myself. My name is Tara. I'm the um, education coordinator here at Ozabot. And I'm Teresa Rothnor, and I do education curriculum. So the first thing I want to do really fast is just make sure that everyone can see and hear us okay. So on the little sidebar for the webinar, you'll see there's a section that says questions. If you can just type in there yes, um, that you can see us and hear us okay, then I know that we can keep going. Okay, perfect. Sounds good. Um, one other thing I want to point out is that there is that question section now that you know where it is. Um, we can't really see that during the presentation, so if you can just hold all of your questions to the very end, then once we're done with the presentation, we'll go ahead and um, open it up. Um, and then we'll go ahead and read your question out loud and answer it so that everyone can hear it. Um, one more thing I do want to point out is that if you have BIT and you're only using BIT, then this webinar doesn't really pertain to you today. You would need an EBO. So if you do have BITs, um, I would, I might want to jump off this webinar unless you wanted to stay on and learn more about EVO and um, deconstruction um, if you're interested in purchasing EVO in the future. So then go ahead and stay on and, and see what we have to offer. I'm going to start with a poll, or I'm going to start with two polls right now. I'm going to go ahead and bring them up. Um, let me just launch it for you guys. Okay, so our first poll is what grade levels are you using Osobot with? And then you can select one or more of the following. I'll give you just a few seconds to go ahead and enter in the answers. Okay. Perfect. I'm going to close the poll and share the results. All right. So that's really interesting. 100% of you are using it with grades 1 to 5, 36% in kindergarten coming in second, and then we have 27% uh, 6 to 8, and then 9% high school. So we do have uh, various deconstruction lessons that Teresa will be going over that um, cover the different grade levels. Okay, and then our next poll is, do you teach computer science? And I'll give you a few more seconds to go ahead and put in those answers. All right. And it looks like it's 50-50. So 50% 50 of you are teaching computer science and the other 50% are not. I'm gonna hide those again. Okay, perfect. So we'll go ahead and um, jump over to Teresa and she's gonna go over the deconstruction. So I'm gonna take myself off camera. All right, hey everyone. So we asked you about computer science because our deconstruction course is all about teaching coding through deconstructing a ready-made program. So I'm just gonna walk you through um, some things through my screen. So I'm gonna share my screen right now and then take me off. Okay, cool. So I'll just navigate to where you can find out information about the deconstruction series. So on our homepage, when you click on educators here, um, deconstruction is featured in our banner, so you'll just click the new deconstruction series. All right, so um, on this page, we talk about the lessons. So I'll just scroll down to uh, where we break down the different lessons so I can kind of tell you what it's all about. Um, so deconstruction is a method that a lot of computer engineers actually use when learning computer science. So as you're learning computer science, you don't necessarily spend time with the definition of what is a loop or a variable. You actually want to start applying it or you want to see creative ways other people have used it. So that's why our tagline for this is learn like the leaders because um, everyone uh, who learns computer science is actually working with something that's already pre-made and then 
remixing it to make it their own. So this series is aimed at grades six to eight, but if you have like a computer science, uh, if you have time set aside for computer science or um, if you have a lab or something, then you could go into fifth grade, maybe younger, it's up to you. And this is using Ozo Blockly. And this series is also using Evo, but we are working on lessons for a bit as well. So with um, this first game aimed at beginner students, um, you'll start with learning sequential code, the proximity sensors, loops, and movement, which seems like a lot, but um, the way it works is students are playing the program and they kind of learn through play, so it's not too much. Um, I'm actually going to demo the game after I go through this, so you'll see how it all comes together. So for each of our deconstruction games, we're calling these our games, they have different levels, which are different lessons. So level one is all about movement. You're going to learn how to move your Evo, and you learn these CS concepts, computer science concepts. And then level two will teach you winning and losing. But with the computer science, you're actually going to be doing is conditional logic. So like, if this, then do this, else do this. And um, next would be learning how to build points, which is actually using math operators and variables, which can be really um, abstract concepts to students, but when they apply it to a point system, especially in, like, in a competitive way, students get really excited. So it's a really fun and easy way to teach these concepts. And then um, there you can teach functions. Um, and then finally, they'll actually build their own game using all the things that they've learned. So they can, um, by applying what they've learned, they'll remember it better. So that's how this game would work for teaching computer science. We have a couple more games that are slightly more complex. We have um, Breakout, which is similar to uh, that brick breaking game that's old school where you have a paddle and you're bouncing a ball and breaking bricks. So it's kind of a play on that. And then the final one is um, Hockey, where you actually have to teach Evo how to play with a paper puck, so it's dealing with a 3D object. So you can kind of check out those, but we're going to focus on this first one, which is Evo's Color Quest. So I'm going to open up my camera and do the demo for the game so you can see what I mean. And then Tara, let me know. OK, perfect. So this is the board for the game. And um, the way it works is, OK, perfect. So now you can see it. Um, so what you do in the classroom is you actually preload your Evos. And the lesson talks you through how to do that easily. And then students will just play the game. Uh, since Evo is going to be walking on different colors, you want to um, turn off the um, you want to calibrate to these. So I'm going to calibrate Evo right away. Hold, let go. OK. And then black is going to be our starting circle. So since the program is already inside, you're going to double click. To play this game, you just put your hands around Evo um, to activate the four proximity sensors around its body. Um, if you push it from, if you go behind, it'll move forward. If you activate one of the two front proximity sensors, it will turn and move forward. Then once we get, so now we're on a color. Evo is telling me how many points it has. So it saw blue and now it knows that it's one point. So your students in groups, we recommend students working in groups will actually play this game. While they're playing, Uh, like this. <laughs> okay. Um, let's see if we can zoom in a bit. Okay. Um, so this is the worksheet for students that's actually saying things like, if my hand is behind Evo, then what happens? Um, so when my hand was behind Evo, then I would write, like, move forward. So students will be doing this. They're deconstructing the game right now before they're even seeing the code. And then um, 
they'll go through the sheet. So it's things like if Eva walks on white, then what? Well, we can see Eva is on white. Eva's not doing anything special. But when Eva lands on a color, Eva does do something special. So when I got three points, then I get a little victory dance. So then I can describe the victory dance. So it was like light up, spin, laugh. This is an opportunity to point out to students that we didn't code the robot, we didn't say do a victory dance, we had to give it specifically in order what we wanted it to do. So once students have gone through this worksheet and played the game a few times, they already understand the game mechanics. So now what I'm gonna do is show you the program. So I'll just navigate to there real quick. And I'll share my screen again. Okay, and we'll go through the lesson library as well later on to show you how to navigate to find these. Um, but I'll just point out that when we have a lesson with Ozoblockly code, we have it with the attachments here. So I'm actually just going to click Ozoblockly preview right here. And this is the program. So I'm hoping you feel a little bit overwhelmed because that's how students might feel. But then I'm going to bring you back to, oh, this is actually OK, which is the whole point of deconstruction. We want students to be able to see computer code, even in block form, and then eventually get comfortable with it. So now that students have gone through this worksheet, they're going to check out this code. Um, you can actually spend in your first lesson, just a really quick time going through this. It doesn't have to be block by block. So it's things like the proximity sensors. Oh, well, left front caused Evo to move slight right. Um, and you can get more detailed with these blocks later on when students are remixing their own program. And just kind of pointing out, like, this is um, a variable. So in mode four, when you set a variable, you can just, they're just names then you can give number values to these names. So if I were to explain variables on their own, it might not be very interesting. Like here's a name that you can put a number to. You might think, I don't really care about that. But by doing this, you can see that, oh, I'm getting a point. And students can also find out why they don't get two points on red. They don't get 500 because they're only allowed to get one. Um, obviously, kids are going to start getting creative and thinking of different things they want to build with this, which is great because they're already applying what they've learned about variables. Um, so you can kind of go through the program. This is how you can check how many points you have. And then if points equals three, break out, do your dance. So that's actually all there is to this program, but it uses a lot of logic and different concepts. So um, then I also want to point out, and I'm going to just navigate back. You can see all right. Okay. Navigate back to this really cool page that breaks everything down. Um, that in each of these levels, which are lessons, are about 50 <laughs> minutes, depending on um, how long your class is, you can kind of alter it. But each lesson also has a challenge. So in this one, uh, I'm actually just going to show you a printout. Uh, this way. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. So for the first lesson, we're actually going to focus on these movements with the proximity sensors. Students will be like, well, I want it to go faster. I want it to turn like less quickly. I don't need it to move forward or something. Um, so I'll show you the map as a challenge. So this challenge is you can start your robot on whatever point. This is not line following. Instead, students have to test how well they've um, edited their program to cause just tiny increments of movement. So maybe you just want five degrees of movement, and then you want it to move um, only when your hand is there so you can get really exact movement. So this is teaching students like what we said here for on the screen. For the first level, they're going to be learning how to alter their proximity sensors and movement. Sequential code is just that each block performs in order. Um, 
And then, so each level has its own little game, like own little mission, we call it, inside that's like focusing on one game mechanic at a time. All right, so that's each of these three games that we're focusing on. So this is aimed at computer science. Um, but we also have some other lessons using this concept. Perfect, thank you. Um, I'll show you what we also have. Um, before I do that, I'm going to show you some other of the cool things that we have included with these lessons. In each of these lessons, we have these quick teacher's lesson cues, which just means once you've read the lesson, you've figured out what to do, um, what's in the lesson, you can just print out this page and it just walks you through each of the steps. And it includes some of the questions you want to ask your students, some of the answers you should have. And um, just step by step, how to go through that. So that's always one page. I also want to point out um, that each lesson, like the challenges, also have a worksheet. And we kind of give tips on what are the best blocks to use. We encourage students to test out the different blocks, see um, which one gives them the best result. So you want to definitely check out the rotate block versus just rotating left or right. You want to rotate a specific angle. So that's what students want to do. And then reflections for students or specific questions that they can answer. That's all included. And also, um, this is mostly for the teacher. This is just walking through what the code is actually doing, just so you know uh, where we're coming from when we built this program a certain way. So that's also in the lesson. So you can find all that together. And like I said, we'll go through the lesson library in a little bit. But I want to point out a couple other things besides these computer science courses. Um, so back to the this here. So this is actually a kindergarten deconstruction lesson. The way it works is to prepare, the teacher will create these blocks, and these are the blocks that pre-readers can use in Oso Blockly. Um, and I'll show you that in a second. This is large enough to put on your board. And students receive this map, which has the program. So students can think of this program, okay, move forward five, so they can imagine their robot moving forward five steps. This is rotating in this direction, so they can imagine their robot, let me just grab mine, rotating this way. Now it's going to move five steps again. Now it's going to rotate to the left and move five steps. As you can tell, of course, you want to get home. You don't want to go into the forest. So now your students need to build that program. And we have a little sad emotion coming <laughs> from Evo. He doesn't want to be in the forest. He wants to go home. So in the classroom, you have these individual blocks that you can ask students to organize properly. How do you turn, how do you command the robot to get home? And then we have our happy Evo, your sad Evo. So that can teach students the reasons behind these blocks. They can see really, really quickly how and why it's sequential um, in order to perform what they want. Because computers, honestly, they're very dumb. So we have to be really specific when we talk to them. And that's like a big part of teaching computer science. Okay, so that's that. And then um, I'll show you another lesson, which I'm really excited about. Um, so this is a lesson we prepared for this month about Dorothy Vaughn, who was a computer engineer and programmer for NASA. So in this lesson, students will actually learn about Dorothy Vaughn, who taught herself the IBM language Fortran and um, made sure that she was able to um, understand how to work uh, the brand new uh, digital computers, which is really inspiring. And it's all about deconstruction, which we want students to feel comfortable teaching themselves. And then this is a uh, kind of explaining Fortran, which is an early, like I said, IBM computing language. And then this is like a manual involved in the lesson where students are actually going to read um, how you would use Ozo Blockly to create a 
mathematical formula and solve it just like Dorothy Vaughn would at NASA. Um, so in a way they're deconstructing programming by kind of using a manual like you would have had to have done years ago before we had YouTube and robots and awesome teachers that were teaching coding. Um, so students practice teaching themselves and then um, doing math with Oza Blockley and their robot. This is for Bit and Evo. So that's so, sort of what we're all about right now is deconstructing programs, teaching yourself, learning from your mistakes, and like getting really creative with coding. Um, okay, so let me go back to do this. Okay. And I think my screen's still up. So yeah, and then um, I can just go to the lesson library. Okay. So I'm also going to navigate you guys through the lesson library really quick and show you what um, I was telling you all about just now. So again, ozobot.com, we have all of our teaching resources here on ed the educators tab. And so this other button is go to the lesson library. And just to point out that we have our color codes here to the basic training to get started if you're new with Ozobot, Blockly how to get started, and then deconstruction here as well. That's where you can find the lessons for deconstruction. We also have here a write-up for you if um, you want to read more about this style of learning and teaching and, and how we approach teaching computer science this way. You can go through our README, we call it a README file, which is a play on software always has a README file that tells you about how it works, so that's that. And it also includes the standards that apply here, so a lot of your um, standards for mathematical practices, for kind of Common Core, um, are ISTE standards using technology in your classroom, and we're also a fan of CSTA. Um, they have a lot of great resources on um, what's good to teach at what year. Um, so we've kind of applied that here. And again, this is another sort of overview of the lessons, what you learn in each of these for the deconstruction computer science course that I walked through. Right, so um, in the lesson library, when you go find a lesson, you would just hit like the buttons that I was doing. So we have like this game for um, color codes. You just hit download lesson documents and then you can save this PDF or um, Print it right from here. I'll also point out that when you're ready, you can use our search. So maybe you want to search up something like physics. And I'll show you some lessons that actually have. We have a bunch of high school lessons. Um, they're sort of like experiments. Um, what you would do is also load your bit or Evo with these and um, have your robot play on a map. And then students can study some topic that you're doing, like um, uniform circular motion or something. And then if you wanted to, you could also have the students go into the Ozoblockly code and deconstruct how it works. Um, that's not necessarily required in the lesson, but it's something you absolutely could do. And then in the lesson library, you can also use this filter. So uh, I can tell you right now, we don't have any kindergarten physics lessons. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and delete that. But if you don't have, um, kindergarten and you wanted activities you can filter through that so this is drawing color code drawing lesson right here our rainbot landing practice for Christmas or any time of year trick-or-treat and all these different lessons so you can search through here and find lots and um, we've actually organized our lesson library so that depending on what grade segment you're working with, you can actually find um, some of our favorite lessons in each of these categories that will help you get started right away. So like multiplication practice is here for third grade, fourth grade, whatever, and some science. So it's really easy to kind of go through this. And then if you want to find more, definitely check out our search. Um, we have our featured educator lessons. Um, since it's, well, um, since it's February right now, we have our Winter Olympics lessons here too, so you can check that out. 
I think I'm good here. I'm going to pass it over to Tara, and she's got more to say. Okay. So let me go ahead and share my screen really fast, and then I'm going to change myself to presenter. Um, so I'm going to show my screen. Hopefully everyone can see it. Yep. Yes. Okay, perfect. So with your EVOs, it's really important to know that they're updatable. Um, they're just like your phone. Um, you get updates regularly, and then um, you want to make sure that you're they're updated um, to the correct and uh, most current firmware because we're gonna be sending some really cool tricks to the bot, we're gonna be upgrading the bot, and that's all done through just connecting your robot to the app. So I know that um, it might be a little hard to connect all, if you have a classroom kit of 12 or 18, connecting them all one by one to your app. So we've created this awesome new Evo updater, which allows you to update more than one bot at a time. I'm gonna go ahead and click on, I'm gonna take myself off the screen actually first, and then I'm gonna click on my Evo utility updater right here. Um, I'm gonna send the link to everybody actually right now through chat um, so everyone has that link we're also going to be doing um, a follow-up email right after this webinar and it will have the links um, to everything that we've already gone over and shown you so this link will be included in there but i'm going to send it out right now so you have access to it right away i'm going to go ahead and play this video so you get an idea of how easy and quick it is to update all of the evos at one time Download the Evo firmware updater to your iOS or Android device, turn on your Evo, and keep it within six inches of the screen. The updater will automatically search for your Evo, and once it's detected, we'll start uploading. You'll also notice that the bot will turn solid white LED color. You can keep note of the progress right here in this bar. We're currently at 14%. Now you can upload or turn on more than one bot at a time. We recommend doing no more than six. So you would just take all of your other Evos, turn them on and set them down. And once this one is finished updating, it will automatically detect another Evo and start uploading that. Once the Evo has been successfully updated, it will turn a yellow and then a pinkish purple color. It may make a sound. And if you just give it a second, um, you'll notice that it will move to the updated section of the app, and then your bot will also turn a solid green light. So Download the Evo for- oh, Let me take this off. So it's really simple to use. It's available in iOS and Android. Um, app stores so you can go in there and just look for the utility updater and then you can keep watching that video um, it's here on youtube as you can see um, to be able to help walk you through it um, another thing that i want to show you is more links so if i go here to ozobot.com and i click on the educator section at the very top Teresa showed you where the lessons were. You can click on here to go to lesson library or here for the new deconstruction series. You can also click on this button right here to get the lessons as well. But we have our quick start section, which is there to help you get started quickly. <laughs> and it, um, we have educators guides, Ozobot tip sheets, the color code reference sheet is right here as well so that you can just download it and give it to the students. Um, something we've also added to the color code sheets is the explanation of what each one of the moves does. So if you don't have that updated sheet, I would definitely go in there and print that. We have our Ozo Blockly Getting Started section, and then we do have our Evo guide. So all you Evo owners out there, make sure that you've downloaded this and you have this. If you got the classroom kit, then this was included, but if at any point you find yourself or you've lost it, I know the kits travel um, to different classrooms, so a teacher might have kept it, you can go right here on the website and download all of the resources for free. Um, and then 
I do want to show you, here's our webinars and PD section. All of our webinars are recorded and posted right here. This one will be as well. It will be up in a few weeks, so you can always revisit it. Or you can visit some of the other webinars that we have also um, done and posted for you. So I think that that's all that I had right now to go over. Um, so we'll go ahead and open up the question section. I'll leave this page up and then um, go ahead and ask any questions that you have. We'll read them out loud for everybody. And let's see. Okay. All right, so we have one question and it says, about as a Blockly on a Chromebook, after I calibrate the Evo, then click once to turn it on. Sometimes it moves around so I can't get the program to load since it moves. What am I doing wrong? Sometimes the robot will still, its, its wheels will keep spinning even while you're trying to load the program. So all you have to do is just hold it up against the screen and click load. As you're holding it and the light starts to flash, it will eventually, the wheels will stop moving. Um, so that's just, just hold it up there. I know sometimes with the Chromebooks, you just want to set it down. Um, or even the Chromebooks, I think they're um, set up kind of like a desktop where it's the screen is actually not laid down flat. Just hold the OSBOT up there for a second and then um, it'll go back to loading and you won't have any issues with the wheels again. As long as you see Evo is blinking green continuously, that's fine. But if you find that it's just white or reacting to your hands, then um, you might want to calibrate again. Sometimes it can take a couple of times to make sure that it only sees what the, the screen, so it knows it's looking at a screen and it's just ready to take in the program. But there are times where I'll be loading a program and it's still spinning, but it mm -hmm. is flashing green and it's working. Yeah, it's normal. It's not, it won't mess up the program or anything. All right, we have another question. Where do you suggest to begin with a class of about 27? They haven't been exposed to much of coding other than code.org. Uh, because it depends on um, how old they are. Um, I can kind of show you the, um, in our lesson library. I think it's on my screen right now. Okay. Let me. If they're in sixth grade, and up, then um, you can definitely do the lesson that I showed you, that whole course with, um, um, with uh, it's called Evo's Color Quest, and it's five lessons long um, if you want to get deep into coding, but I think Tara has some ideas as well. Yeah, um, let me see. I'm not sure, oh, they are seventh to eighth graders, okay. Um, if they have only had a little bit of coding experience with code.org, um, let's see. I just went to ozoblockly.com. Hopefully, yeah, you can see mm -hmm. that. So if you scroll down a little bit, you'll see this getting started section. This is what takes you to the actual editor. But if we go back and we scroll all the way to the bottom, there's a game section. Mm -hmm. And this is Shape Tracer and Shape Tracer 2. These were designed to introduce the students to the coding editor, Ozo Blockly, and to create somewhat of a game for them and they have a goal. And um, let's see right here, all of my windows are open so I can't get into the editor. All right, so my goal right here is to get Ozobot to trace the shape shown in the preview window and make sure to match Ozobot's light to the color line. So this um, simulator window right here is gonna show me what the Ozobot needs to do. So the kids have just a few categories to choose from. I only have movement and light on this level. And they're going to have to create this program to be able to make this robot in the simulator move properly. So as you can see, that code that I created was a success. And then I can move on to the next level. So as they progress, the levels are going to get harder. And then they, once they finish Shape Tracer 1, they can actually move on to Shape Tracer 2, which is a lot more difficult. Um, so I would definitely start there. That's one place that mm -hmm. I would um, go to first to introduce them to Oza Blockly in general. And then um, can you go to the lesson library? Yeah. Um, so at the top of the lesson library on the top bar, it says color codes, Oza Blockly deconstruction. If you click Oza Blockly, those are individual um, lessons with the idea of building up. So if you want to start with teaching, um, 
the first one I think is actually Shape Tracer, and mm. then um, the second one is Shape Tracer. The third one is like um, it teaches you paired programming because if you've got 27 kids and 18 evos, they'll be working in pairs, which is really great because then they can answer each other's questions and um, problem solve between themselves versus always raising their hands for your attention. So with pair programming, um, one student is the driver, they're the one at the computer. The other one is um, kind of leading the direction of where the code should go, and then they swap places multiple times so they both get that experience. Um, and then the rest of the lessons get deeper into the codes, what you can do, and that's actually a really um, nicely paced lesson as well if you don't want to jump into the computer science with deconstruction. Mm -hmm. Okay, so next question. Can I use the Evo app to load the program onto Evo before class, or do I have to use the flash loading? So in our deconstruction lessons, we actually have um, one of the papers in the lesson that you will get is how to load programs with the Evo app. So we recommend, we walk you through making an, um, a profile on your phone, and then you connect to, as well, we would recommend connecting to six spots like you do for the updater. And then once you have six spots that you're connected to, you can go to Oza Blockly, load the program, um, Oza Blockly inside of your phone app. And then each bot individually will get the program and you know they will because they'll start running the program right away. So this sheet in the lesson will actually walk you through how to do that. Okay. All right, so my Evos don't seem to follow the color marker codes as well as my bits do. Have you heard any feedback on this? Yes, and because of that feedback, we have created a fix for it. So if you don't have, I'm, I'm guessing that your that firmware that your, your Evos are on is not the most current. I think we're at 1.8 right now. So you definitely want to connect to the app or use that utility updater that I showed and update all of your bots. As soon as they're updated to 1.8, you're gonna see that there is not, you're not gonna find the same issues that you've had with this Evo. Um, the problem when we, re when we first released Evo is that it has more sensors on the bottom, so it actually um, was more, how do I say it? it a little it's more very accurate, but yeah. not too accurate. So we so. Had to tone down how much green it was really looking for, so it saw what we wanted to see. Mm -hmm. So that's why it wasn't performing the same that uh, bit, the same as bit. Uh, but we fixed it. So go ahead and go on there and uh, update the firmware, and it will be it will solve all your problems. Yeah, and again, you can update with just your phone with the Evo app one at a time, or like the video we saw earlier, um, you can use your phone or a tablet to update up to six at a time. It's really easy. Okay. Are there any other deconstruction lessons in the lesson library? Um, yeah. So like I said, currently um, there are those the three games that for teaching computer science, which you can do sequentially or individually up to you. Um, then if you go to the lesson library and look up Dorothy Vaughn, um, which we've also sent out an email. So if you look up Dorothy or Fortran, which is the programming language I mentioned, then you will actually see the lesson come up. So that one, like I said, is based on deconstruction. Um, and then if you look up the Oso Blockly mini lesson, um, the mini lesson is actually like a 30 minute lesson for second grade and up to teach how to use Oso Blockly if you wanna start using Oso Blockly for your subjects. So if you wanna start teaching your math lessons and stuff, then you wanna do the mini lesson um, and um, that take, that, that's taking a part of program. And then in that same uh, page, that's where you'll find this lesson for a kinder that I showed you earlier. Okay. Um, is there any way to turn off the distance sensor so that we can play a bowling game? Um, so with Ozo Blockly, you can. Um, so I'm imagining this is like a line following game that you're thinking of. Um, so if you go into Ozo Blockly and um, actually I'll just grab the screen. Yeah, let me change you over. Oops. Okay. 
Okay, thank you. Perfect. All right, so in Ozo Block, we all just trash this. Okay. Um, so to turn off the proximity sensors while line following, you want to set up um, this program where forever you're going to be line following. This is just going to override the basic um, behaviors of Evo. If you are using color codes as well, then um, uh, you won't get the reaction from Evo like it normally gives you going over color codes, but it will see the color codes. Um, so you can actually test that out if you have like a line jump to the right with this program on your bot, it will still see the code and perform it, um, but it, you won't get that same feedback, but you can program that in. Um, so that's what I would recommend in this situation. Um, how many EVOs are in a classroom kit? You know what, I can't see this all the question. Let me see. How many EVOs are in a classroom kit? What is the pricing and do you have any discounts for schools? Um, we do have two different options for our EVO um, kit, so that's really exciting. You have an option of 12 or 18. 18 pack kit is brand new. It's only been out a few months. Um, we do have discounts for schools if you want to purchase direct. So all you have to do is email us. Our email is ozoedu at ozobot.com. And again, we'll send out a follow-up email after this webinar with all the links. Um, but for those of you who might be watching this um, when we post it up on our website, it is ozoedu at ozobot.com. And let us know that you're interested in the kits and that you're school. And we'll go ahead and send over all of the discount pricing information for you. Okay. I think we've answered all of the questions so far. Um, um, I can mention one more thing about Ozo Blockly on the topic of deconstruction, and then I will be done. Okay. <laughs> um, so here we are on Ozo Blockly, as you can see. And over here on the right, we have some options. I just want to point out this button right here. It's like uh, multiple pages. These are actually examples that you can load. We have them for Bit and for Evo, which you can tell um, from their um, image or when you're like moving to different um, bots or um, when you go to different modes. So if I go to mode four, this is our more advanced code blocks, and you click on the examples, you'll actually get the examples for this mode. Um, so you could open up, this is a version of Color Quest, not the one from the lesson, but it is um, one that you can do. And this one's for Evo, so I'll switch it over. But you can have students, if you just want to have them playing a game and checking out a program and reworking it, remixing it to make their own thing, you could also just give them this program to, to mess with. And there are examples for mode one, so if you have pre-readers and you just want them to kind of mess around and explore, you could load up like Fashion Runway so they can see the sequence, your happy bots moving forward, turning, showing off, and then strutting back. And then they can um, remix those codes. So that's another way you can use deconstruction in your classroom. It's really easy going. And um, you can pull it out anytime in Oprah Blockly. Did have another quick question about accessing this webinar at a later date. Yes, you can. You can access this one and all of our old webinars on our website. So if you go to um, ozabot.com and then right at the top, you'll see that educator section. And yeah, that little link right there will take you to this page where all of our past webinars live. Um, and we cover various topics, getting started with Evo, getting started with Bit, um, getting ready for the Hour of Code. This one will be up there. And then we do one prob probably about one of a month. So um, look out for our next webinar next month. We always send out an email about a week beforehand, letting everyone know, and then um, you can sign up for it. So definitely go check out that page. Um, and I think, 
let's all, let me see. Oh, yep, yeah, that's all the questions that we have. So thank you for joining us. We're really excited to share deconstruction with you. Um, it's brand new. All of these lessons were just posted recently and we will be creating more. And then as Teresa said, there will be some bit deconstruction lessons coming out soon. So, so look out for those. Everyone enjoy the rest of your afternoon. Thanks for joining us and hopefully we'll see you on the next webinar. Bye.